Hi, Margaret Maloney here, and today I want to tell you the tale, or a tale, of two PMOs. You know, recently I read a statistic that says that 50% of all pro project management or program management offices, PMOs, fail. And at first I thought, wow, that seems really high. And then, you know, I was reflecting and I thought, well, you know, you've been part of two PMOs, and one of them failed and one of them succeeded, and then I realized, oh, I'm that living statistic. And that led me to want to share with you, I'll say, the tale of the two PMOs. So the first PMO. The first PMO was sponsored by an executive vice president. She saw that there was a need for some consistency in the way in which projects were being executed. She saw that there was some chaos. And so she went to one of her directors and she said, you know, I think you should set up a PMO. And in turn, he went out and he selected some of the project managers who he thought were probably, you know, had leanings in that area and were doing a good job running their projects. And he brought in an expert on project management office organizations. And we then all together brought in excellent consultants we went to seminars and learning to understand what we were doing and how we should do it. And in turn, the executive team said, oh, what a great idea, we swear our allegiance, and of course we fully support this. But when they said this, it was in meetings with the vice president. Now the experience that we had behind the scenes was these same executives didn't have time to talk to us You'd show up for a meeting, they'd be gone. They didn't have a team member who could spend time with us. And yet again, in public, you know, when it came up that we weren't getting very far and that we weren't getting supported, in public they would vehemently deny this. And it was because of scheduling and, you know, resources and we were being too demanding. So out of desperation, we went to the people who were running the projects. And we looked at people who were newer at running projects and we reached out to them, reached out, and we said, you know, we can help. Can we mentor you? How can we support you? What do you need to make running projects easier? And with this grassroots approach, we began to experience some success. But unfortunately, it was too late because the perception already was that we were in an organization that was taking time, taking money and not getting anywhere. And really, because behind the scenes, we really weren't supported. We were supported from the top down, but that was it. So although we had a little bit of progress with our grassroots approach, we were disbanded. Which leads to the tale of the second PMO. A couple of us, a few years later, we find ourselves you know, at the same company, working in a different division. And this division has a PMO, a small one, and they want it to grow. And so surprisingly, they reach out to us, those of us who had been part of the first PMO, and ask us to join this PMO and BIP. And it was surprising because we knew that they had full access to the information about the first PMO and, and, and that we had failed. But what they saw in us was our I'll say our battle scars, our, our lessons learned is a better term for that, right? Our lessons learned and how we knew. And what we knew, what we had learned was that organizational culture plays such an important role. And what we didn't work with correctly in the first PMO was organizational culture. We worked at a company where nobody said no to anything in public. Nobody said they wouldn't do something. Nobody said they wouldn't support something. But if they didn't want to, they just wouldn't do it. And that's what happened in the first PMO. People just wouldn't play with us, if I could say that term. And nobody would make them, not even the executive vice president. So in our second attempt, we really socialized our PMO. We reached out to everyone. We held an open house with games and suggestion boxes and fun food. And we didn't make one official decision or announcement until we walked around and we socialized it. We met with people formally and informally. 
we went to people and kind of our mantra, our, our saying was, we're the PMO, how can we help you succeed? And in that way, the people who were going to benefit from the PMO built the PMO. Yes, we facilitated it, but our approaches, how to do things came from the people and in this way nobody felt like something was being pushed on them. And in this way, they supported it because it was, you know, this is going to sound grandiose, but it was the PMO of the people, right? Did that take a lot of time and energy? Yes, it did, absolutely. But that time and energy was part of our plan. And so if somebody said, you're making progress slowly, at least we were making progress. And when it was time to announce a new process, a new piece to the project management methodology, it was supported and it stayed in place. Did we make everybody happy? No, absolutely not. But we were successful with the majority of the people. Some people didn't want to work with us. Some of them came around. Some of them never did. But we learned that using and learning your organizational culture by working within the organizational culture, we were able to build a PMO that was successful which could then lead to positive changes. And that was really the point. Thank you for being here. That's the tale of two PMOs. I wish you every success with yours.